The PARTNER-3 trial randomized 1,000 patients who were at low surgical risk with aortic stenosis. Half of the patients were randomized to surgery and half were um, randomized to transcatheter aortic valve implantation. The analysis was an as-treated population, so that was 950 patients. The primary endpoint of the trial was a composite endpoint of death, stroke, and cardiovascular rehospitalization at one year. Uh, the mean age of patients enrolled in the trial was 73, and the mean STS predicted risk score was 1.9. One-year data showed that uh, TAVI was superior to surgery for the primary endpoint of death, stroke, and cardiovascular rehospitalization. Looking at the individual components uh, of the primary endpoint, um, <clears throat> both cardiovascular rehospitalization and stroke were statistically significant. Death was not a significant difference, although it trended uh, toward a benefit with TAVR. So the two-year data uh, does show some changes uh, compared to the one-year data. Uh, the two-year data uh, was still favorable for TAVI, uh, but not uh, nearly as significant as at one year. The hazard ratio uh, was uh, a 37% benefit uh, for TAVI at uh, two years. Uh, TAVI was still non inferior to surgery at two years, but the main difference was due to uh, a significant difference in the rate of rehospitalization. Uh, the rate of stroke and death had both narrowed between the two arms at two years so that they were close to uh, identical at the two-year period of time. What we also saw um, were uh, that difference um, uh, happened because there were more deaths and there were more strokes in the TAVI arm than in the surgery arm between year one and year two. We also saw that there was an increased incidence of valve thrombosis. Uh, in the first two years with TAVI compared to surgery. There were 13 patients with VARC-2 definition of valve thrombosis at two years with TAVI and three with surgery. Uh, we also saw that there was uh, both treatments remained durable at two years. Uh, there was no uh, change uh, in mean valve gradients, uh, no change in aortic valve areas, and no change in the incidence of either mild or moderate paravalvular leak between the two arms. We also analyzed it by new VARC-3 criteria and found that the incidence of uh, structural valve deterioration or bioprosthetic valve failure was the same uh, between uh, the two arms. So the conclusions uh, uh, of this trial is that both options, both uh, uh, TAVI and surgery, remain viable options for patients who are low surgical risk. However, it has to be noted that there was an increase in both death, stroke, as well as va valve th uh, thrombosis between one and two years in the TAVI arm. It should also be noted that these are only two-year results and we really need to know longer-term results and hence subsequent analysis would be done at three years, five years, and at 10 years to be better informed about shared decision-making with the patient. Also, um, we have the caveat that these results apply only to the population studied. So that means that uh, patients that were excluded from the trial, so asymptomatic patients, patients with bicuspid valve disease, uh, patients that were not candidates for a transfemoral approach for TAVI, patients with significant concomitant coronary artery disease were not studied, and these results should not be extrapolated to those patients. 
So uh, all in all, the results are still positive for TAVI, uh, just not quite as, as uh, uh, different uh, as they were at one year. The, the uh, time to event um, Kaplan-Meier curves begin to converge some between year one and year two. So uh, from what we know now, uh, uh, TAVI will be the preferred approach in low surgical risk patients, uh, as long as they uh, uh, mimic the patients that were included in the trial. So these results don't apply to patients that were younger uh, or have bicuspid aortic valves. The mean age was 73, very few patients were under 65. When you have two different modalities of therapy, and one is less invasive than the other, then the less invasive approach is always going to be preferred by the patients and their referring physicians. Therefore, from what we know right now, uh, a TAVI will be the preferred approach in low surgical risk patients. However, we've already seen some changes between year one and year two, and we have to be open-minded that we may continue to see further changes as subsequent analyses are done and these patients live longer. The most important aspect is going to be durability. The younger you are as a patient, the longer you need your valve to last because the longer you're going to live. So the real important information is going to be 10-year outcomes of structural valve deterioration. 